Friends, good morning. The meaning of Christmas. The idea of Christmas is borrowed from the so-called pagans, as have all our theosophical ceremonies, rituals, and ideas. Among all the ancient peoples were ceremonies at this season of the year similar in kind to our own. The use of evergreen trees, wreaths, and garlands as a symbol of eternal life was an ancient custom. It was a it was custom of the Egyptians, the Chinese, and the Hebrews, and so forth, a very old custom. Tree worship was common among the pagan Europeans, survived after their conversion to Christianity, and was a forerunner to today's custom of the annual Christmas tree. We see in the secret doctrine that the symbol of the tree standing for various initiates was almost universal. Jesus is called the tree of life, as also all the adepts of the good law, while those of the left path are referred to as withering trees. John the Baptist speaks of the axe, which is laid to the root of the trees in Matthew chapter 3, verse 10. And there are other references in the Bible to tree. It is around the end of December when the sun itself returns from its journey southward to the north again. This coming of the sun was understood by the ancients to be the birth of the sun. So the Christmas season is a season of the birth of the sun. Behind the sun as behind every body or person, there is spirit, life, and intelligence. So with the return of the sun comes a spiritual, a mental, a moral growth and uplifting. Like the speaker, first speaker just said, if we could take advantage of this incursion of energy, we could do much more than we do now. Ideas taken hold of and carried into expression have tenfold the power than they would have at another time of the year. The ancient message of the Gnostics is the same message upon which Christianity and other religions are based, and it is the message of theosophy. In the context of Christianity, the first key that one has to use uh, to unravel the dark secrets involved in the mystic name of Christ is the key which unlocked the door to the ancient mysteries of the primitive Aryans, Sabians, and Egyptians. We may have heard of the Aryans and the Egyptians. This student had not heard of the Sabians. They were, uh, were ancient uh, group in Yemen uh, who were merchants in frankincense and myrrh, they were known as, and now we, we've heard of that, frankincense and myrrh with the song, etc. In any age, but particularly in times of rapid transition, the human face of past, present, and future contend with one another. Locked in mortal conflict by the illusion of difference. The period of history that began with the first century BC and ended with the year 414 AD was an important one for the Western world. During those 500 years, certain causes were set in motion, the effects of which we are still feeling today and may feel for some time to come. This period contains not only the life record of Jesus, but also the story of a church that grew from a single individual to a powerful organization. It also witnessed the beginning, the growth, and the final destruction of one of the greatest theosophical schools in history. It marked the death of the mysteries, and it sealed the doom of the old religions, science, and philosophies. The ancient message of the Gnostics, supplanted by the early church leaders, was universal. This ancient message was the echo 
of the primordial wisdom religion that had once been the heirloom of the whole of mankind. We may learn from the gospel according to Luke that the worthy were those who had been initiated into the mysteries of the, Gnosti of the Gnosis and who were accorded worthy to attain the resurrection from the dead into life, into this life. In other words, they were the great adepts. The, wor the uh, words apply to all of us who strive and succeed through personal efforts to live the life and to attain the naturally ensuing spiritual illumination and blending their personality, the Son, in terms of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, with their individual divine spirit, the God within them. One who strives to blend their personality with their individual divine spirit and do the will of that spirit is a Christ man. On the other hand, those who choose to ignore the Christ within themselves must die unregenerate heathens, notwithstanding all of the rituals in which they partake, such as baptism, sacraments, lip prayers, and belief in dogmas. In our age, the religion of the people has become increasingly materialized and disfigured. The current generations are questioning more and more of the literal interpretations that are out of step with the laws of nature, thus causing major modern religions with their separatist teachings to revise their efforts to maintain a dogmatic hold on the people. The more one studies the ancient religi religious text, the more one finds that the groundwork of the New Testament is the same as the groundwork of the Vedas, of the Egyptian theology, and of the Mesodian allegories. The term Christ and Christians were well known centuries before the Christian era and were similarly borrowed by the later Christians from the uh, temporal terminology of the pagans. The term Christos and Christos we see uh, in the literature wrote them up there in case we want to do some research on those terms. They were well known centuries before the Christian era and uh, they were they, they, they were uh, they came into the mysteries. Uh, the word Christos also meant the way or the path. Uh, when the Christos uh, was uh, addressed his master uh, he said thou art the path after the disciple had been initiated himself, the same words were repeated by him, or repeated to him by his teacher. I am the way, said Jesus, after he had become a Christos. Thou canst not travel on the path until thou hast become the path itself, said the voice of the silence. And HBB reiterated the same idea when she said to her pupils, do not follow me, Follow the path I show, meaning by that, do not follow my personality. Follow the Christos principle within yourselves, the only light on the path that really exists. The primitive Christians for the first three and a half centuries celebrated the birth of the Savior on March 25. This custom was changed by encyclical by Pope Julian II, who in the year 345 AD ordained the shift to December 25. The decree stated that it was fitting that the Christians should be in accord with the custom of, the, of that followed uh, by Mithra, which is a Zoroastrian sun god, and of Bacchus, the Roman god of wine and fertility, who celebrated the birth of the solar deity at the winter solstice. But were the early Christians wrong? Easter is also called the birthday of the gods. 
HPV makes reference to Jesus 44 times in the second volume of the Secret Doctrine alone. Jesus was a great theosophist, an initiate, a teacher, a philosopher, and a reformer. Yet from a historical perspective, we know less about Jesus than we know about Krishna, Buddha, or any of the other divine beings of record. The image of Jesus uh, with which we are familiar at the present day is the same likeness of the Greek god Serapis. There's an old story with, the, with two key points. In the Jewish Gemara, G-E-M-A-R-A, -E for those who want to do some research, And it's, uh, it's a section called Sefer, S-E-P-H-E-R. Um, T-O-L-B-O-S. There's one more little word, J-E-S-H-U. We find that Jesus was actually of Greek parentage. His name was Joshua ben Pandera, and he lived in the early years of the first century BC. Jesus was initiated into the mysteries of the Jewish temple. In his early youth, and he, uh, the, he, he later went to uh, Egypt, where he was uh, initiated into the Egyptian mysteries. These points are corroborated by the Masters and by HPB. HPB says, the position they give to Jesus, as far as we know, is that of an initiate who recognized no difference, save the moral one, between men who uh, rejected, he, he rejected caste and who, uh, uh, sorry, And uh, he despised wealth, and who uh, if, who finally lived uh, he he finally lived a century before our vulgar so-called Christian era. HPB's words. HPB says, "Let the world judge Jesus for what he was, a Mahatma, a perfect man, perfected man." And Mr. Judge in the Ocean of Theosophy describes him as an avatar, a member of the great fraternity of adepts. In a mystery beyond human comprehension, the Christ story is both of the cosmos and of every human being. It tells of the birth and the evolution to relative perfection of the whole universe, the human race, and of every <coughs> human individual. Three Christs can be dis discerned in the gospel narrative. The cosmic, the uh, mystical, and the historical. Okay, the cosmic is a deific life um, and presence in nature and all things of the deity. The mystical is a, uh, is the Christ presence in every human being. These two are off, often skipped over and we hear about the uh, historical of the great figure who appeared on earth some 2,000 years ago. He came to let us know that we could be like him but that frequently is, is uh, skipped over, and the focus is the one and only Son of God. The five major stages in the life of our Lord are passed through in every aspirate to perfection. The nativity, which is one of them, And we're all familiar with that. We see the uh, nativity scene at Christmas time. Uh, the baptism. And 
the third is the um, transfiguration, the crucifixion, and then the ascension. The nativity, uh, the, the, the baptism reaches the pu is when the uh, person reaches puberty and the deeper descent into matter. The transfiguration, the son of the father to brother of man, is what that really means. And the crucifixion, the divine life most deeply imprisoned in the densest substance of the solar in the solar system of the solar system. And uh, it's sometimes said that we are keeping Jesus uh, in chains, imprisoned, until we come to realize that, uh, that these uh, are universal principles that are within us and within the entire solar system, as below, so below, the teachings tell us. So we all are capable of someday, uh, through perhaps not in this life, but in some lifetime, uh, becoming an initiates or brothers of man, perfect, perfected brothers of mankind. The great spiritual teachers we know of uh, all have births of a miraculous and divine order. They are threatened at birth by an opposite power like King Herod. They are tempted, persecuted, and finally put to death, whereupon they descend into the underworld and then raise a, rise again from the dead. We can only conclude that behind these words lie certain basic spiritual truths. In other words, the recorded history is the drama of the soul, its growth and unfoldment. The King Herods symbolized the illusory world of material existence, which ever strives to kill the awakening perceptions and obscure the fact that the immaculate birth is not that of the physical body, but the mystic birth of initiation. I am in the hearts of all men, says Krishna speaking uh, as a Logos in the Bhagavad Gita. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, as St. Paul. Chief among the delusions of our own age is the Jesus image. Be ye perfect, he taught, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. He came to spread the tidings of salvation through self-knowledge. Yet some have affirmed in his name that knowledge is impossible, and that all hope lies in blind belief. He came not to deny the law, but to fulfill it. Yet some turned his mission into a unique event which made belief in the law impossible. He came to demonstrate the Christ in all, and yet so misdirected were intermediaries who followed him that few have been able to identify themselves with the Christ ideal. HBB points out that Christ is the true Christ, the true esoteric savior, is no man but the divine principle in every human being. He strives to resurrect the spirit crucified in him by his own terrestrial passions and buried deep in the sepulchre of his sinful flesh. He who has the strength to roll back the stone of matter from the door of his own inner sanctuary, he has arisen Christ in him, whether Hebrew or Christian by birth. Theosophists refuse to materialize and degrade that which is the purest and grandest ideal, the symbol of symbols, namely the immortal divine spirit in man, whether it be called Horus, Krishna, Buddha, or Christ. 
Jesus was one of a body of perfected men. There were others before him. There, were, there have been others since, and there will yet be others, and men being a generic term, men and women. There is a truth in the life story of Jesus, but that truth will become manifest only in the light of the same truth in the lives of other men and women. Regarding the Christos principle, Mr. Judge states on pages 58 and 66 of the Secret of the Ocean of, the Ocean of Theosophy that when, and, and this, is, this is a quote, and when we either wholly or now and then become consciously united with booty, the spiritual soul, We behold God, as it were. There is what the this is what the ancients all desire to see, but what the moderns do not believe in. The latter preferring rather to throw away their own right to be great in nature and to worship an imaginary God made up solely of their own fancies and not very different from weak human nature. Although reincarnation is a law of nature, the complete trinity of Atma, Buddhi, Manas. This is continuing the quote in the ocean. Does not yet fully incarnate in this race. They use and occupy the body by means of the entrance of Manas, the lowest of the three and the other two shine ab upon it from above, constituting the God in heaven. This was symbolized in the old Jewish teaching about the heavenly man who stands with his head in heaven and his feet in hell. That is, the head, Atma and Buddhi, are yet in heaven, and the feet, Manas, walk in hell, which is the body and physical life. For that reason, man is not yet fully conscious, and reincarnations are needed to complete the incarnation of the whole trinity of the body. When that has been accomplished, the race will have become as gods, and the godlike trinity being in full possession, the entire mass of matter will be perfected and raised up for the next step. This is the real meaning of the word made flesh. It was so grand a thing as the case of any single person, as in that case, such as Jesus and Buddha, as to be looked upon as a divine incarnation, and out of this too comes the idea of the crucifixion, for Manus is thus crucified for the purpose of raising up the thief to paradise. Christmas is a season of birth and of growth. It is the season of the rebirth of the spiritual nature. We seem to carry on with the observ observations uh, observances as, as in some way or form, but we have lost the knowledge we had. We have forgotten and we do not apply to ourselves the fact of the recurrence of this real Christmas time, the season not only of the physical renewal of the earth and all beings, but also a return of the inner life and of uh, impulse of a spiritual kind. As Easter is a celebration of the ascension of spirit out of matter, Christmas is a time when spirit has fully descended into matter and is ripe to spread throughout matter. Christmas is thus a time of rebirth. The life of, uh, of earth is young and the inner life has its uh, rejuvenance and its growth. For us, the tide of, of recession has prevailed through many centuries. We are living in the Iron Age, or the age of Kali Yuga, it's also known, which was preceded by better ages known as the gold, the silver, and the bronze ages. This iron age we are living in 
is an age of spiritual darkness. Not only must we pass through this Iron Age, but we must start a new Golden Age with all that, have, that we have gained. So it's a continuous learning process. At the present time, our discoveries, our science, and our religion, our social and national life are too focused on material things or things represented by the lower self, or the lower manas, it's often called. Uh, the more the self-conscious man has gone into matter, the more he has closed his spiritual doors because his self-consciousness and energy have been put into terrestrial objective things. But he must go through these uh, sages and emerge from them, bringing with him all the knowledge he has gained while immersed in matter. Moreover, he must impart his feelings and understanding to the kingdoms below him. Then, when he moves up the scale of being, that matter, too, will be lifted up and become more fitting for his use. In the receding tide, old theology, theological ideas have lost their sway over the minds of man. Minds are searching in every direction for that which is stable, permanent, and true. They are looking for a knowledge which is feasible and practical. If we make up our minds to do it, we can follow the path of our great predecessors, the great saviors of the world, the great saviors of all times. They come from the same body, whether we call them Buddha, Jesus, or another name. They are all beings of the same nature who come among us and, as was said of Jesus, and all things become like unto us, that they may impart to us something of their great knowledge and point us to the path. They followed always the, um, the path they followed. Always the objective of their coming is that we in time may become as they are. And at the Christmas season, when the latent rebirth of God in man swells as a seed in spring beneath the snow, there is an outpouring of the heart which meets and joins the larger rhythm of great nature. Christmas is in the springtime of the occult world, the world of gods and heroes, of saviors of mankind. Then eyes shine with a light of wider sympathy and uncalculating kindness, and minds expand with the spirit of giving. But there is a giving that is not of things. There is a giving of the heart itself. There is a giving of service, of love, of brotherhood, and of every thought that makes for good. A giving open to all, however poor our personal possessions may be. Again, ideas taken hold of and carried into expression have tenfold power this time of the year than they would have at another time. Merry Christmas. Now for comments and questions. Stay, leave it leave it on. Leave it on. Yeah. Did you say that uh Christos was Atma Buddha? Or Atma Buddha and uh, uh, Well um the Atma Buddha part for sure. Uh Manas is, is I mean it's it's combined uh, in the Christos in a perfect way. Yes. Uh, so they are they are they they have perfect knowledge. Yes. So yeah. Higher. It's higher manas. Higher. The higher, as you know, uh, is manas is split into two parts. What we was called the higher and the lower, uh, and the lower being the intellectual mind, which we tend to associate totally with mind. But we have that higher mind. So when, once uh, once we, once one is perfected, the crystals, uh, they all join together in the perfected mind, a one, very one-pointed, who knows everything and can do the right thing at the right time. It's a perfected being. That's the way the student understands it. And we have another comment or question. Uh, I guess a comment and a question. Ah, um, uh, Dupree, please. Oh, yeah. The, uh, well, the uh, comment is the uh, idea. Some followers of uh, Christianity would say that uh, 
Jesus was the son of God and then also uh, you got some believers that say that he was God himself incarnate in man but now you mentioned the word you mentioned the word drama and that's how I perceive it as a drama just like on stage because at the crucifixion if he is God you don't kill God I mean you know if you bring the bare logic to that thought there so this idea of God being crucified and then rising it's, it's all a play that's unfolding it's a deeper mystery here it's just like when they say uh, this is my body and this is my you know what's they call it in communion when you drink the wine this is the blood and this is the crackers you can see that that's all symbolic right there so it's the notion of um, this symbolic term um, that they've taken which is highly, highly metaphysical you know the Christos principle and they have uh, turn this principle into a personality, you know, this physical personality that the, the historic Jesus that they have presented in the Bible, you know, missing years. There, there are too many gaps there. And I think young people in general and people who are waking up and having time to um, examine this story, because back in those days, if you were, you know, you couldn't even read, you know, you had the Bible in your uh, home, but if you were caught with the Bible, you know, you were persecuted and things like that. So with this generation or preceding generations, you know, waking up and um, being able to think for themselves, they began to see these kind of loopholes that are in the story, not just in, within Christianity, but in these narratives anyway. I mean, uh, wherever they may be found. That's you raised you raise quite a few points there. Right? Back, to, back into this uh, mystery behind human comprehension. So this student has to only think about our total human, na our human nature. If we're ingrained in a story, if we, we make a story, and we get ingrained, first is that the myth, this mystical Christ, which is presented in the Bible, uh, is, it, it indicates that someone knew a lot about the uh, mystical part. Because it's, again, out of that story, uh, you can get a lot of things like we uh, outlined before. The thing is, what's happened in this day and age, in the student's view, we, we're so ingrained in, in the material world, we can only visualize something in a body. We call that body Christ. That Christ is separate from the rest of us. That's the concept that we obviously are thinking about. This guy over here can do it, we can't. We can't think about the cosmic side the mystical side like you, that you talked about so much, we, we have trouble getting our arms around that because uh, what are we talking about? The idea, you know, we have the one God, uh, the one deity, uh, and we, we misconceive that as a, as a guy in the sky. Well, God cannot be contained. So w until, we, until we get our uh, mind around that and we're thinking about God is within everything, God within, is within us too, the mystical part of it, we miss a very important part of the story because without that story, uh, we can easily think, well, gee, I can't be like Jesus. Jesus was the only son of God. Well, yes, Jesus was the only son of God, but there are many other only sons of God, if you want to think of it in that way. Is that kind of what you're getting at with your comment? Yeah, just, just, just putting it all together. You mm -hmm. know, as you say, uh, people whose minds are opening up, questioning you know, because one time you weren't even allowed to question. It's just like even Well, today. guess what? The reason why you're not allowed to question is because I have made up a story. Exactly. And I want to stand by my story, and you got in my way. Exactly. So I want to get rid of you. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's what went on back in the early few hundred, first few, yeah. few centuries. I, it was mildly stated in this case, but I mean, there was murder and all kinds of things yeah. going on. Well, that's why the Theosophy School got... Uh, 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 closed because the uh, because of the murder of Hypatia. You know about yeah. that. Well, well, even today, as we sit here in this room, this is Sunday throughout this neighborhood where we are. You got men coming before uh, their congregations and just giving them all kind of verbiage and then not allowing them to question. They leave and exactly. they got an injection of emotionalism and feel good. You make you get to feel good, yes, exactly. And then when you good. when you walk away, what do you think? That, that's all. Well, gee, you know, I heard in history, I, I, I've studied in history that man has been around for millions of years. Uh, uh, on this planet, 18 million. This is the latest number this student has seen. It's in the Theosophical literature, on, it, just on this, just in this mantra. So how come it is that uh, God, uh, in his benevolent love to us, 
waited around until 2,000 years ago to send us the only begotten son. Well, give me a break, yeah. you know? <laughs> uh, does that kind of get at what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. I have a practical question. Mm -hmm. It seems that people always make all of the resolutions 1st of January, and then in January they start putting that impulse to implement it, and usually they fail. But it seems like from the uh, mysteries and foldings what Tunji mentioned, it is December, it's critical month, because that's where transformation occurred and reverse occurred. Well, it's around this time of the year, you know. So uh, there's no astrological... It, it computers from uh, December to March. To March. Which okay, so that's period. That's period of the mm -hmm. Earth's magnetic okay. sphere, okay. because it's renewed at this time, mm -hmm. with the coming of the sun god. I'm sorry, I took it over. Well, <laughs> yes, you did, didn't you? That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was a good start. That was a good start. So we're talking about the time. Uh, if if you think about the the you know uh, the the Christmas time, that's about the beginning of the winter, as uh, as uh, the seeds start uh, going down into matter, if mm -hmm. you will. In the springtime, just thinking about the planting of the far the farmer can relate mm -hmm. to this. Uh, uh, things start shooting out of the ground about then or, or, or whatever. So that whole season, what, when, when uh, spirit goes into matter at its deepest point around Christmas, okay, and then it goes, it goes from there to on around, it's, it's, it's getting strength, it's gaining strength uh, in the ground and then shooting up in the springtime. And the solar system also uh, reflects that too. Uh, with a joining, uh, and this student uh, is not an expert on the solar system, but around uh, December 21st, I believe it is, the solar system, one of the solar systems occurs, and around uh, March the 25th, uh, the solar system again occurs, where uh, the sun goes south and then comes back north again, um, something like that. Or goes, maybe the, right, the reverse it is, it's coming into the north, uh, one way or the other. Uh, that's that's what happens. In other words, there are these two cross sections in December 21st time frame, March 25th time frame, uh, when this occurs. Mm -hmm. So. So it's the energy we're really talking about. Mm -hmm. It's the universal energy. Tunjai. If the current of your endeavor is in line with it, it pushes it forward. It mm -hmm. gives it impetus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words. It's impersonal, impartite, universal for the benefit of all. Because at the core of the universe, that is the love mm -hmm. that is centered. And it is imprinted in our own heart. So this is what the writings are referring to. Not personal goals per se, but mm -hmm. even that probably gets mm -hmm. benefit from it. But impersonal ones, that is for the benefit of the all. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea. W every action is taken uh, it should be it should be for the benefit of, of all, which is a very is a very difficult thing to do when you examine your motive, you know, and say, okay, what did I do that for, anyhow? Uh, so these beings, these uh, sun gods, and all those that come from that uh, brotherhood, are perfected men in the sense that they were able to overcome their personalities and they're showing the way for the rest mm -hmm. of us to follow. And that's what the story's all about. Mm -hmm. Dupree? Yes. Um, speaking of the word perfection, you know, Jesus said, uh, be ye perfect like your Father in heaven. And that perfection um, requires a series of uh, reincarnations. Of course. And, it, and it's interesting that, um, you know, Christians would argue uh, with you that reincarnation is not in the Bible, but it is in fact in of the Bible. Of course it is. That's um, one concept that's needed along with karma, for instance. Uh, Law. Well, yeah. The, um, you know, the expression, you reap what you sow, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So now, those two things, HPV said, are needed solely by the West and, well, by the world in general, you know, the understanding mm -hmm. of those two concepts. Um, I but was at, le the, at least uh, the East kind of hunt has kind it, of, yeah, but it's They know story. what reincarnation and karma, yeah. they have some idea what it is. Well, it's it was all, it's almost been totally left, uh, yeah. lost. Well, you know, in you the got West. The, 
uh, people thinking the Brahmins got the people thinking that they're going to be re they return as uh, something else other than a human being. Uh, I guess that was just a comment, but uh, it's just the idea that uh, through comparative um, religion, how you mentioned about the sun gods, how it's been mentioned, if you take a look at Buddha history, uh, Hermes, uh, Trigmagistas, and all these other people who have come into the world, that would be one tool to use to, I think, help, uh, what's the term, um, help see through the, um, the narrowness that any particular religion has is putting forth. And when you can examine the Pupavul in Central America and then also go to the Congo and, and you see the, or you go to Scandinavia, wherever, you know, throughout the world, and you see that all these people have some kind of concept of something occurring within themselves and within nature. That would be one key to combat this, this narrow-minded bigotry that these personal religions are trying to put forth. That's down there. Exactly, and, and you just uh, espoused exactly the, the reason why we come here week after week and try to understand uh, these concepts, comparative religions, etc., uh, throughout the world to try to, you know, theosophists have said, have one gift to give, and that's the truth. And these are things that we study so that we can understand the truth, not in the type of uh, thing that you described, which is uh, emotionalism and so forth. It's also said that we can't grow very well uh, when we go to the, the, the extremes, uh, emotionalism on one side, extreme sadness on the other. We've got to be in the middle and happy and constant at all times. So that's what we, it's, we try to uh, develop uh, as students of theosophy, that constancy, uh, increasing our knowledge and understanding so that we can help others around us. And first, we have to d develop our personal growth, right? And then in so doing, we're helping others around us uh, see the light, too. Continue on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's also said, I mean, you're talking about specifics uh, about, about reincarnation. In Jesus' time, reincarnation was assumed. It's, everybody seemed to understand what reincarnation was. You know, we, we look in the Bible, for example, one quote, uh, Jesus says, who do you say that I am? Uh, who, who do men say that I am? And one of the comments from the disciple, I believe, was, was oh, you're John the Baptist of old. Okay, that sounds like uh, reincarnation, doesn't it? Um, so, mm. just to throwing that out to support what you just said <laughs> about <coughs> being in the Bible. Clearly, clearly it's in the Bible. Mm. Even though uh, the Bible has been written and rewritten, we understand quite a few times. Uh, it's still in there. It, it, that's interesting that, you know, in this rewriting and trans iterations and all that, that they let that slip by. And that's just, you know, those, that's one of the anchors that uh, anyone who's researching and looking at this thing logically, they, they try to explain away, but they cannot yeah. explain away. Well, it's, it's in the Bible, and it's not only in the Bible, we, we, we uh, quoted uh, the Gospel of Luke. Mm -hmm. Okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, mm -hmm. Gnostic type uh, stuff and uh, things in there, statements in there about the Gnostics. Yet the pagans, uh, you go on the internet, uh, you go to church, whatever the case may be, the pagans were, you know, they are back there in the Dark Ages, those Gnostics, they didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> We've got the answer, people. That, that, and, then, and then, you know, and then it's mentioned here that the key to under, unlocking all this, as was uh, uh, said earlier, really is the key to, uh, back to the ancient teachings, which are the Aryans and the Gnostics and so forth. We've lost that key now because it's been squashed so much. Well, we almost lost it to the, until the, as long as theosophy is around, we will all have totally lost it. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, throughout uh, the it, it, theosophy has been with us uh, since time immemorial, and uh, you know as uh, powers come to be uh, for whatever reason. Right now, it's materialism that's causing uh, uh, it to be sort of squashed down. I mean, we have the, we can basically say what we want to say these days in this country, anyhow. We hope without being uh, getting our heads chopped off. But uh, you know as as pressures come to bear, 
I mean, we have running around outside, getting ready for uh, Christmas, getting our gifts and so forth. Materialistic world supersedes this very important uh, spiritual message that uh, the, the great masters have uh, imparted to us or imparting to us today. Well, the idea of Santa Claus, um, this jolly old guy, um, is just like the Easter Bunny again. You know, Santa Claus must have a lot of magic. You know, he's able to slip down everybody's chimney and give all these gifts in the night throughout the whole, well, uh, well the average kid thinks that it's throughout the whole world, throughout the whole Christian world anyway. Now, the idea of magic again. So, it's just like a fairy tale or a nursery rhyme. They still, you know, you, you seem like you cannot get rid of it. You know, this, this magical aspect again, this, this figure of Santa Claus, could not be, again, an allusion to, uh, there's some elements of mystic, mysticism in, in the growth of this story of St. Nick. First is what is magic? Well, okay. Well, okay, what is, the real, what is the real magic? You know yourself. It's, it, is, it is things that are incomprehensible to our mind as it's developed today. Would you call that is yeah, magic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Is magic impossible? But no. But see, I'm saying. Magi. Magi. Right. It comes from the word magi, which is what the, the ancient right. Persian hmm. initiate. But, but see, what I'm getting at is that here, the church, they present this thing. There's no such thing as magic. There's, it's either sorcery, et cetera, et cetera. But now, this idea, this notion of Santa Claus, who is able to. Uh, mysteriously, magically go around the whole world down everybody's chimney and, and and allow the toys to be given, they sort of like, here is one angle that they have allowed to not question in a sense, even though it's in a, a little fairy tale form, you see. That's mm -hmm. how I mean. They bring out that element. Yeah, well, uh, the Bible is full of, uh, we, would, we may not want to call it fairy tale because that, that gets the wrong meaning across this day based on our concept of what a fairy tale is, but it's full of myth. Joseph Campbell was the uh, uh, most recent one this student knows about uh, that talked about the power of myth. Well, we can't tell a story in full or not understand it in full. We, f we throw out the myth, which is the myth of uh, this student seeing you saying. And when we go to that movie, The Life of Pi, which is on uh, now, there was, a sto there was a person at the end of the uh, show, uh, the, the uh, person who the, st the story was all about said, uh, uh, well, I told them the truth and didn't believe it, yeah. so then I told them a story. They believe that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that's, that, that is, I mean, sort of the power of myth. It gets across the idea when we really don't, we can't humanly conceive. How can we humanly conceive the story of Jesus? It's very difficult, especially when we put when they try to put the blinders on us when we go out there in the ma in the major world. Well, we still have Chris Chris Kringle. Chris is analogous to. Uh, uh, you don't have the microphone. Uh, to Chris though, so. Chris Kringle. Chris. That could be that the K is often substituted for the C and the I. Is Sounds like the E. Mm -hmm. Well, you can, you know, you can stretch it a little and come up with the. Uh, Tujai. In relation to magic, there is no such thing because as the soul goes through these progressive awakenings, its inherent powers that the soul is endowed with becomes active, and we see this in this perfected man. Jesus was a Nazar, a wanderer, a healer. He went from place to place healing the sick. So wouldn't that be considered magic? Sure. Yeah. But it Absolutely. You, you, he, turned, you know, he turned water into wine. But it isn't magic because he, knew, he understood the laws of nature. He worked with it to bring about these results. And HPV tells us that these powers that we're endowed with, when used for the benefit of the other only, then it becomes active. Mm -hmm. It's not for us to use it for our own selfish purposes, it's to give benefit to everybody. So when your personality then is effaced or it put in line with the higher, and then that light uh, of the Christ principle in the heart shines through, then you can bring all these changes about. Well, it's said that uh, 
once we get it ourselves in line with nature, which Jesus did, which Buddha did, uh, nature oh, opens oh, opens its bosom and shows its secrets. Yes. So it's, that's in the Gita, I believe. It's part of Bhagavad Gita and, and implicit implic all over the Bible. Go ahead. Sorry. Apollonius of Tiana was um, adept on the scene for the first century AD because Jesus or Joshua Ben Pandira came one century before. Okay. So Apollonius of Tiana was on the scene as a witness. Thank you. Do we have other comments? Certainly we must have a lot. But we'll continue uh, uh, next week or Wednesday night when we have our midweek meet meeting. Uh, probably this kind of discussion would, would be our Sunday morning at 11 o'clock every week. Uh, and please uh, join us here in Bethesda. Uh, we'd love to have you. Or uh, if you want more information and you can't get here e easily, go to www.ultdc.org. Thank you for joining us.